we will first, I would like you to take out your bulletin, and in the front of your bulletin, we will say what is our mission, our vision, and our model. And we will just say it together. Our mission, we exist as a church to see people come to know Christ Jesus, be saved, healed, set free, disassembled, equipped, empowered, and sent to serve. Our vision is to present the gospel of Christ Jesus to all the people, to change their mindset and empower them to live for Christ and become his disciples. Our motto is the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set the oppressed free. Luke 4, verse 18. Our center in him is 420. We will sit and just feel the presence of the Lord as the music, as the organist plays our hymn and we join in with the hymn 420, Read or Need Breath of God. Sheet of paper, it has back and front. I want you to take it 
home, pray over it, and ask the Lord to guide you, to show you which of these ministries you would love to see us embarked on. You can, every ministry has to have a leader. Some people said they're not, they don't have the gift of a leader, but they will follow. So if you're willing to follow someone who will take, take on one of these tasks, one of these ministries, write your answer and bring it in next Sunday and we'll have a basket and we'll just put it in so we can see. Um, let's look at number 12. It's a Lenten service. Community Easter egg hunt. On number 48 to the back, the reason why I'm just skipping here, it says cooking and baking ministry. I would like us to form this group, form a group that when these special events come around, we have a group that we can bake our own cookies, pies, and cakes. I love that. Um, Christmas is coming. Um, and I, it would be nice if we can all get together and and bake cookies and Christmas pies and different things like that. I love to cook. My mom was a cook and she taught all of us to cook and to bake. But um, my older sister, who is not here anymore, she was the professional cook and baker. She had lots of businesses in New York. But I would really love to see us have a ministry like this, to have cookies, pies, cakes, and different things. And um, for when it's Lent, when it's Advent, and different occasions. So I would like you to really pray over this and ask the Lord to guide you and to choose one. To the front of it, we have number 14, Evening Bible Study. I've asked um, Ms. Eileen if she would lead a, a Bible study, and she said yes. And I was so excited. <laughs> Because I would like to, I would really love to have that. So think about it. If you can come in the evening or in the morning, I would teach a Bible study in the morning, but if someone would like to do that, you just let me know. I'm going to be here with all of you. I will support you. So look at all these, choose one, or you can choose several. And just write your, your answer on, on the sheet and hand it in next week and we will go from there. Okay? Thank you so much. God bless. Um, do we have any more announcements? Any announcements? Is there any activities coming up that I should know of? Okay, yes? I have on my calendar that there's an administrative council meeting on Tuesday and I just want to confirm that that's still yes. Tuesday at 7, right? Yes. Yes. Yes, it is. Oh, my book is in the office, but yes, it's on Tuesday at 7. So please don't forget that. I will be here early. <laughs> okay. Anything else? All right. As we continue our morning worship, we will stand together to the call of worship. To you, O Lord, I cry, and to the Lord I made supplication. What part is there in my death, before I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it tell of your faithfulness? Fear, O Lord, and be gracious to me. O Lord, be my helper. Lord, you have turned my mourning into dancing. You have taken off my sackcloth and girded me with gladness that my soul may praise you and not be silent. O Lord my God, I will give thanks to you forever. O opening hymn 530, R.E. Abel.
and sent me your blessed son to preach peace to them that are far off and to them that are near. Grant that all people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your spirit on all flesh and hasten your kingdom through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Jesus said, take away the stone. 
Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench, because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked, up, looked, upon, looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Lazarus, come out. Dip it up. Dip it up. It says years ago a ship was on the Atlantic in distress. Because of its supply of fresh water had run out, the crew faced a horrible death from thirst and that with water all around it. Imagine you're in this ocean and you ran out of fresh water in your boat. What is surrounding you all around? But it says, the story went on to say, when hope was almost gone, they saw a ship approaching them. At once they hoisted distress signals, but the only answer they got was, dip it up. <laughs> dip it up? What heartless mockery to dip up buckets of salt water. Lazarus, come forth, unwrapping. Again, life is given. Dip it up. But, what mockery? They signal again and again, but the answer they received was, dip it up. Finally, in despair, they lowered a bucket. Can anyone tell me, give me the answer, I love to ask questions. It says, imagine the, the amazement and joy when it turned out to be what? Can anyone tell me? Fresh water. How will you guess it's fresh water? They thought it was salt water. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was fresh water, but listen to this. He said they did not know it, but they were at the mouth of the mighty Amazon River, which flows the fresh water far out into the ocean. But yet these men were dying. They were beginning to get fever because they had no water. They believed they did not have fresh water. And as we read this story about Lazarus and the doubts that his, even his sisters had about Jesus. Fresh water and to come forth is always given to us. But we always have straps around us. We always have something wrapped around us, keeping us back. You realize that? Anyone realize the power that Mary could have had in the presence of all those people that were mourning with her? Do anyone remember? Don't look at your Bibles right now. But who was Mary? Who was this Mary right now? Lazarus' sister. What did she play in the life of Jesus? Which part? She listened. Hmm? she listened. She listened to him. I don't have it anymore. I don't have the long locks anymore. <laughs> but she did something remarkable. I give you a hint. She, she, she anointed. Hold on, Wayne. She anointed his feet with oil. Huh? Okay, and what else?
She had a new grand life in Christ Jesus when she sat at his feet. And that's why she was always at his feet. She was there sucking up the fresh living water. But here, isn't that like some of us, or most of us? The minute something isn't done as soon as we desire, we begin to doubt. Isn't that? Yes. One author went on to say that once again, here in this story, Jesus is pressed with agony. He did this. He said, what did he say when he looked up to his father? He said, he prayed. He said, I am looking to you so that the people would believe that you sent me. That's what he did. He went, he said he was in agony. You know, there were many, um, the Donatists, they believed that Christ was not human. But he was. He was both human and divine. So here is the, the humanistic side of Christ. He felt the agony. He felt loss. He felt love. He had deep empathy within him. Isn't that human? Think of us when our loved ones pass. How we feel our hearts are broken. But Christ showed it more. He said when he wept over the death of his beloved friend Lazarus, so many people, especially his sisters, lacked faith. Martha especially. Martha had an attitude. When Christ asked for, for Mary, she said, she's not there. Why are you here now? Imagine that. Because Christ, she felt as though if Christ had come when she sent for him, her brother would not have died. But you know what Martha said, and it's right. He was right. He said, Christ is not in the business of being told what to do, only by his Father. And here Mary, because Mary wanted Christ to come now, now, now. Christ is teaching us something. He's teaching us the way to pray and to believe. He's preaching us to, to when, when we feel as though something is delayed, do not give up. Do not lose faith. Keep on believing. Trust in Him. Trust in His Father. He will answer. But do you remember the scripture says, a day in the eyes of the Lord are like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like what? A day. Yes. So this is this is what Christ is trying to show them. He said, we must have in our minds a picture of this. Of how not to doubt. Wait. Pray. What is prayer? One of the hymn writers said, Prayer is the key that opens the doors. Prayer is the key that unlocks heaven's door. And this is what the Father did. This is what Christ Jesus did. Christ prayed. What, what should we do? When we are bombarded, when we feel like life has wrapped us from head to toe, like a mummy, what should we do? We should pray. To break these, these crises, all these bands that is around us. Pray. Imagine hearing Christ's voice echoing into the night. When you feel the loneliest, when it's the darkest. It's just like when he called Lazarus. He said, come forth, Lazarus. And he said it with boldness. He said it with love. And Lazarus came forth. He had so many wrappings around him. He was staggering to walk. Think of our lives today. Some of us, we have so many issues going on, whether it's health, financial, or, or families, whatever it is. Christ asked them to unwrap him. Christ is saying to you and me, come. 
There is fresh water. Come and be unwrapped. This is what Christ is saying. Jesus asked that the stone should be moved, but here you see that Martha could only think of one reason for opening the tomb. And Martha again had an attitude. Martha wanted to know why Christ wants to have the tomb, the stone removed. Many times in our lives, especially with illnesses, You'll hear someone say, well, the doctor said this, and the doctor said that. What did Christ say? Christ said, remove the stone. So remove that doubt from your mind. This is what, when we read these scriptures, we must put them to our lives. What, what stone is in your life? What boulder is in your life today? What mountain? There is a scripture which says, and way I would like you to have who may say, if you tell this mountain to be removed, it will do what? And be cast into the sea. Yes. That's it. And this is what the, the, the raising of Lazarus is what's showing us that there is life no matter how dark and doom it seems around us. There is life to be had. There is fresh water to dip up. Christ still heals and he still saves. If he is the power, he can call for the dead from the bowels of the earth. Not even death, not even the grave could have hold him. Imagine what he can do for us in our lives. Do you believe? Are you a doubting Thomas, a doubting Mary, a martyr? Even Mary said, if you were here, my brother would have been alive. She just said, my brother is in heaven, standing before the Father, and I mean him. But no, they did not say that. They doubted every way. But Jesus spoke his words of command. Command. That is what he does to us in our lives. He commands us with love. How many times we 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 have to, we're praying for something for a long time, and when the door is open or when it's given to us, we wonder, is this really God? Think of the command that He said it: Lazarus, come forth. He didn't just say, "Okay, Father, could you just let Lazarus come up?" No, He commanded. The dead to be raised. When we think of our friends and our families and our neighbors, they're living lives of spiritual death. What should we do? We should get on our knees and pray for them. Never let them go. Pray for them and command the spirit of evilness, the spirit of depression, the spirit of whatever is one day, call them forth. This is what we should do. He said, not even the dead and the grave, they were powerless. The hymn writer helps us to understand when Jesus spoke, he said, he speaks and listening to his voice, new life the dead receive. Do you realize that each time, every time someone comes to the Lord, how refreshed they look a week after? Do you realize that? This is what he's saying. When we see, when we see some of our families and friends and our neighbors um, either in drugs or become alcoholic, or, we must constantly pray for them because there is life for them. There is new life. It says not even death could overpower Christ's words. It says by his stripes we are healed. He, he did not have those stripes as yet, but he had the power of his Father through prayer. Lazarus came forth and so our lives must show forth. When we say that we believe in Jesus Christ, that we are a follower of Jesus Christ, 
our lives to show life. Yes, we will have we will have the aches and pains and all the different trappings of life. But we, we are in secured in the power of God. New life is around us. This is what he's saying. Jesus prayed, and the key is to pray. Don't ever get tired of praying. I was out, I, I was sick, I had on one of my next surgeries. And I had to be away from school for quite some time. It was coming close to graduation. And when I applied for graduation, they told me that um, I had to pay close to $2,000 because all of my money was returned because I was out of school for such a long time. I didn't know where I was going to get it. And so I shared this with someone and I remember where it says, the cattle on a thousand hills are Christ. And I got on my knees and I began to pray. I said, God, I just want you to give me one bull and I will sell that bull to redeem that one. Spiritually, within the week, I received a check from Alliance Theological Seminary in New York. I didn't expect it. They said it was money due to me. After I left. I always keep that because that is something that there are many, God has given me many miracles. But sometimes when we talk about like finances, we, we, we want to show others that there are breakthrough. You don't have to keep doubting, you just keep praying. Prayer unlocks the doors, prayer is the key to heaven. He said the power which flows through Christ Jesus was not his own power. It was the power of the Father to glorify the Son. And so when we see him, when we see those miracles being, being raised in us, we must give glory to God and his Son. That's what it's saying to us here. He said this prayer that Jesus offered was so unusual. Jesus looked up. So what is it saying to us? If Jesus looked up, when life is pulling you down, look up. Keep looking up. Don't look down. That's what it says here. It says, Father, I thank you for having heard me. How many of us can say that? How many of us can say the Father have heard us? I'm sure all of us have a story to tell. One, another author said, he did not ask the Father to hear him and give him power to raise Lazarus. He's asking the Father to do it so that he will be glorified. How many times God blesses with something and instead we give God the praise we pat ourselves on our shoulders. Sometimes we can hear some people say, oh, I did this and I did that. And where is Christ? Where is God? Just a couple of weeks ago, I was talking about talking to someone and saying that I was looking for getting some frames to frame my degrees. And the young lady said to me, why do you have to frame them? I said, because God gave them to me, and I would like others to see them. She said, oh, please, I, 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 I work, I said, didn't you work hard for years? Didn't you go to school and work very hard? She said, yeah, I got a degree, so. It was like, so, to me, it was a bit ungrateful, because there are so many people who would like to, to have, to have achieved something. And here someone is being so ungrateful. When God blesses you, you must give back the blessings. And you must show others that truly there is a God. There is a God of power, of grace, and of might. We must honor Him with our lives. Jesus sought only the glory of God. He didn't sought it for 
himself. And this is what he, the scripture is saying to us today. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And all these things, other things shall be done what? I have done to you. See, Jesus prayed for the glory of his Father, and it came to him. He was able to say, Nazareth, this is a dead man. Come forth. Physically dead, in a tomb for four days. And Christ called him out. Don't you think Christ can do more for us than what we give him credit for? We doubt so much. So many times we, 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 instead of we pray, we go and we talk to everybody else around us except Christ. Whatever tomb you are in, whatever wrappings are around you, Christ is calling you forth. He's calling you, he's telling, to, telling you to come home. Dip up the fresh living water that I have for you. Don't delay. As the songwriter said, Jesus is calling, he's tenderly calling. Just think of that. Think of him standing outside that tomb. It was a cave, a wall. Nobody can hear from inside. And if you're out inside, you can't hear what's going on outside. And it's just like us in our lives. Sometimes we're so depressed, we can't hear God's word around us. But he's calling us out. He said, oh, for the wondrous love he has promised. Promise for you and for me. Though we have sinned, Lazarus was a man, a human being, just like us, who sinned in word, thought, and deed. But the love of Christ, the love that Christ had for him, he had for us today. He said, come forth. He said, though we have sinned, he has mercy and pardon. Mercy. Mercy is what brought him, even though he had so many doubters around him. Mercy is what brought Lazarus out of that too. He said, why are you... You are weary. Come home. Christ is calling us. Christ is calling us to, to be refreshed and to be renewed. Or to answer his call, yes, hear my Lord. I'm ready and willing to go with you. I can give you. He says, see on the portal, he's waiting and watching. Watching for you and for me. Christ is there watching. He's watching and he's waiting. Will you come home? Will you say yes? Yes. I just want to thank you. We thank you so very much, dear Father, for your blessings in our lives, Father. We thank you for everyone sitting here this morning. And for those who are out there, on Facebook, and wherever they are, on Zoom, wherever they are, dear God, we ask your blessing on their lives. If they are sick spiritually or physically, Father, we ask healing, your healing power, that they will hear your voice saying to come forward. Father, bless them. And I ask you, dear God, to bless Joanna. Put you touch, touch her, dear God, that your healing power will surge through her, dear God. And that she will, she will be up and about again with her families. And dear God, we bring Paul before you, dear God. We ask you to bless him and his family. That his children and grandchildren will remember, dear God, the one who raised them. Who you gave the power and the ability to work and, to, and the gifts and talents to bring them up, dear God. Bless them, dear and I also pray for my niece, Fisher, who had surgery on Friday, dear God. I thank you for bringing her home safely last night and that she's doing well. But I ask for your continued healing in her, dear God. And with no 
not fail to give you the thanks and the praise. Amen. Let's say the Lord's Lord, prayer together, please. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us all trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This morning as we sing our last hymn, our closing hymn, 378. When you sing these words, think of it. Think of the grace, the power of grace that God has put in our lives to awaken us from our death, from our the sleep of death, the physical sleep and the spiritual sleep. His grace is sufficient for us. May you rise, please. Go forward.